Oh, hi there, welcome to my channel. My name is Leah and today is Tuesday, so that means it is time for Get Ready With Murder. This is a series I do every Tuesday on my channel where I get ready and put on a full face of makeup while I tell you a true crime story. Today we are discussing the killer clown case from 1990. It's a pretty good one. So if you wanna see how I did this makeup and what's going on with that clown, make sure to stay tuned. <laughs> You guys, today is a doozy of a tale. I mean, the title of Killer Clown might be kind of an indication that it's gonna be kinda nuts, but this is a good one. All right, this is actually the story of the murder of Marlene Warren. Um, when Marlene was 20, she had been married. So she was married really young and had two children. Um, and then when she was about 20, that marriage had ended and she met Mike Warren. Um, they immediately fell in love and got married and had just like a totally seemingly normal marriage. They owned quite a few businesses. Um, Marlene had two kids and Mike basically just became their dad. So they owned all these businesses and they were doing really, really well for themselves. They owned like rental properties and a car rental business. They owned a couple of racehorses that were doing pretty well. Um, so by the late 80s, they actually moved to a really affluent neighborhood in Florida. It was called the Arrow Club in Wellington, Florida. <laughs> and the thing that made this neighborhood kind of different is that every home in the neighborhood had its own private runway. So if you knew how to fly a jet or you employed a pilot, you could literally fly to your house. So I think that gives you a pretty good idea of how well they were doing. So things were just going really well for them. Like they were doing really well. Their family was happy. Kids were doing good until 1988 when their oldest son, um, which is, you know, Marlene's son from her first marriage, John um, was killed unexpectedly in a car accident. And kind of because of that, and you know, all of the things that surround losing a child so unexpectedly and tragi tragically, um, their marriage started to have some problems. But you know, they stayed together, they were, you know, they were a family, they were, you know, invested in all of these businesses together. So, you know, they were having some issues, but they're, you know, they stayed together and they were still married. So about two years later, this is when things get crazy. Um, Marlene's at home with her other son and there's a knock on the door. She goes to answer the door and there's a clown, <laughs> which to us in this day and age, pretty scary. But you know, this was the late eighties or it was 1990 actually. So the clown was holding balloons and a bouquet of flowers. So this was probably, she was like, oh, crazy husband of mine. He sent over flowers and balloons. Um, what a nice romantic gesture. So she went to take the balloons and the flowers and the clown then shot her in the face and severely wounded her. At the time of the attack, her son Joe and three of his friends were actually there and witnessed the whole thing. God, can you imagine that poor kid seeing his mom, you know, get excited to have flowers and then immediately be shot in the face? That's awful. So of course police come and they take a statement from the boys and they, you know, take Marlene to the hospital where, like I said, she it takes about three days before she's taken off life support and actually does die from her injuries. Um, so at the time the police release a statement, you know, for the public to be on the lookout for this killer clown. And they kind of just assumed it was a random stranger and then they received an anonymous tip that same day to look into her husband. So when the police were able to track down her husband Mike, he was actually miles away with a group of his friends. Um, they were at a horse track so he had a airtight and you know pretty open and shut alibi at that point. However, the anonymous caller did give another name besides look into her husband. The name the anonymous caller gave besides her husband was Sheila Keen. I'm gonna use this palette today. It's just a bunch of single shadows from ColourPop, but I'm gonna use these greens right here. So who is Sheila Keen? Sheila was a 26 year old woman who was estranged from her husband 
and had a child and worked at the used car dealership that Mike and Marlene owned. Sheila was pointed at as possibly a suspect because it had become known around kind of the office that Sheila and Mike were having an affair. They'd been caught kissing and actually boning down in the office. Um, so I guess they weren't trying to hide it too much from the people that they worked with. So now the police had possible name and evidence from the scene that was the balloons and the flowers that were recovered. Um, they were able to trace the balloons to a local like, you know, like party supply shop um, and the flowers to a local like grocery store. Uh, so they went to the stores and took statements from the people that worked there and the um, like the store clerks gave a description of the people that or the woman who purchased the flowers and the balloons to be someone who looked very very much like Sheila Keen. And they actually even went to the party supply store where the clown suit was purchased and again looked just like Sheila Keen. So they have these tentative matches of somebody who looked just like a name that they're looking into, purchased all of these things, but it's still not enough evidence besides circumstantial. Four days later, they um, found an abandoned white Chrysler in a parking lot about eight miles away from the uh, crime scene. The boys that were there remembered the person, or the clown, I guess, driving a white vehicle. So after they found this abandoned white car, they searched it and they found <laughs> orange fibers in the car that looked a lot like the fibers on the clown wig. Hmm, interesting. Also in the car, they did find long strands of brown human hair, and Sheila had very long brown hair at the time. So with that, they were able to get a search warrant for her apartment. And when they went over there, they found orange fibers matching the ones in the vehicle on her clothes and I believe carpet. So while they did have all of this evidence, it was still considered circumstantial evidence. So the police were kind of had their hands tied and they were not able to make any arrests and the case went cold at this point. So with the case being cold and no arrests being made, Sheila actually left town, um, moved to Tennessee and got married to a man named Mike. Yep, that's right. Sheila is now Sheila Keen Warren. She and Mike got married, um, moved to Tennessee in 2002 and um, were opening or had opened and were running a pretty successful little restaurant down there called The Purple Cow. But Sheila was not going by Sheila anymore. She decided to go by her middle name and um, was going by Debbie down in Tennessee. So basically she and Mike picked up, moved to Tennessee, changed her name and just started a whole new life where nobody knew who they were and nobody suspected them of murder. I just went and popped on my lashes and my liner because I cannot talk and do that at the same time. So here we go. So Sheila slash Debbie and Mike are down in Tennessee living their best life until 2013 rolls around. At this point, um, the case is reopened because guess what? DNA technology has come miles from where it was when um, the case first happened. So the police had those four strands of hair, which they were able to do DNA testing back on. And uh, guess what? Well, weird, it was Sheila's hair. Sheila's long ass brown hair was in the vehicle that was at the scene of the crime that had fibers from the clown wig that um, matched the descriptions from the stores that she purchased all of the things in. Finally, finally, the police had concrete evidence and were able to arrest Sheila in 2017. So Sheila was arrested and has been charged with first degree murder of Marlene Warren. Um, and she's awaiting trial and her trial actually is supposed to be starting pretty quickly. It was supposed to be early 2019. So it should be pretty soon. Um, so this is another one. I guess we'll have some updates on coming up. Make sure you check the description box if you're watching this much, much later. Where is Mike in all this? not arrested, not charged with anything. I guess there is like two schools of thought on Mike and his involvement in this. 
One is that he plotted with Sheila um, and manipulated her into actually committing the crime and has completely gotten away with murder. And looking kind of at the evidence, that kind of might be the case. I mean, he was having an affair with Sheila. Sheila went and killed Marlene. They then got married. He got a life insurance policy cash out, which wasn't, I mean, that much money. It was like $57,000, which is, I mean, it's a lot of money, but it's not like the hundreds of thousands or millions of thousands, millions of dollars that you kind of hear people, you know, kill their spouses for. So, what do you guys think? I personally feel that he's at least involved somehow. He's claiming that he had no knowledge and um, that it's a total shock to him that Sheila got arrested for his first wife's murder. But I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm gonna try this um, liquid lipstick from Ofra. It's in the shade Monaco. Um, I don't know. It just seems sketchy. I mean, how do you not know that your girlfriend is at least being investigated by the police? They would have had to question him about her and he would have probably known that they were at her apartment. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I don't know that I love this lip color, but we're just going to leave it for now. So yeah, I am super interested to hear what you guys think about this whole thing. Um, I think Mike has to be involved in some aspect. He had to have at least known because otherwise why would have they, why would they have left town and changed her name um, if he, you know, if it was totally innocent and they just happened to fall in love and get married years after his wife was murdered. I just feel like he was involved. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below because I want to have a conspiracy chat. All right, you guys, that is it for this story and this look. I will keep an eye on what happens when the trial starts and what the case um, ends up coming to, but I have a feeling it's going to be a pretty long trial. But I will definitely keep you updated, so keep an eye out in the comments below. And let me know what you think, um, or if you have any stories that you want to hear in this series. I hope you liked this video, and um, I hope you like this look. It's a little bit shiny, but it was kind of fun to play with greens. I don't usually gravitate towards wearing greens, but I think... I might have to start putting them in the circulation. So if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It really, really helps my channel. And if you do, I will love you forever. All right, you guys have a super great rest of your day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, 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 bye.